Hey, Lightning, have you heard? I watch the news because I'm a kid. No, I haven't heard or seen whatever you're about to tell me. The Truck Show. We're going to show you what we know. We're going to answer what the truck. Because truck rides with The Truck Show. We have the lifted. We have the lowered and everything is. We'll talk about trucks that run on diesel and the ones that run on gasoline. The truck show, the truck show, the truck show, whoa, whoa. It's the truck show with your hosts, Lightning and Holman. This episode of the Truck Show Podcast, Have You Heard? is proudly presented by Nissan. Nissan has a truck for every need, along with the legendary Nissan Durability. Test drive your next truck at a local Nissan dealer today, or point your browser to NissanUSA.com, where you can use the build and price tool to configure a Nissan truck that fits your lifestyle. And when you're thinking about adding power or improving fuel economy, Banks has over 65 years of experience. Whether it's cold air intakes or exhaust systems, tuning, throttle control, charge air cooling, lubrication components, and much more, no one offers smarter, safer, 50-state emissions-compliant performance parts than Gale Banks. You'll find the best engineered parts for your truck at BanksPower.com. And when you're looking for quality, full synthetic lubrication for your truck, AMSOIL has you covered with motor oil, lubricants and protectants, grease, additives, and more. AMSOIL synthetic lubricants deliver wear protection, engine cleanliness, and fuel efficiency that conventional oils simply can't match. Find out how AMSOIL synthetic lubricants can save you money and time by helping your vehicles run better and last longer than with conventional oils at AMSOIL.com. When it comes to lubrication, AMSOIL is the leader in synthetics. There has never been a better time to buy a retractable tonneau cover at EGRUSA.com. EGR just kicked off a huge, a freaking huge sale. You can get up to 30% off plus a rebate of $250 on all manual roll track bed covers. Let me say that again. You can save up to 30% off the best roll top tonneau covers, the EGR roll track plus an additional $250 rebate. Hit their online store today at egrusa.com. Hey, Lightning, have you seen? No. No. What you got? I'm going to start out with something that sounds rad. I'm all about rad. Bring it. Whoa! What is that on the monitor? Nissan Z Warrior. This is not a truck. So Trademark. Are we we comfortable uh, talking about- It's off-road. Okay. We've talked about off-road Lamborghinis. (laughs) Why can't we talk about an off-road Z? Uh, Sure, sure. Touche. Go ahead. They've got a Warrior line in Australia, which Uh if you remember the Warrior pickup was like a Raptor for the Titan that never happened. Yes. So apparently- This uh, is a Z with a lift and off-road tires. tires. Yeah. Wow. By Tommy Pike Customs. That thing is rad. Look at that. So basically, they filed a trademark for Z Warrior in Australia, and they've been saying they want to have more Warrior options. So uh, high riding Z would uh, be uh, a nice little addition to that. That's kind of cool. So this is like, hey, Porsche, we see your crazy off road uh, 911. Totally. And we, we raise you one. So currently, the Warrior off road package is something that they offer on the uh, Patrol and the Navara. And uh, it looks pretty badass if you were to do it to a Z. So this is obviously a custom build somebody did, but it definitely hints at what is possible. And uh, I love how it has the uh, lights like riveted to the hood. Yeah, that's cool. When did someone... What, so Porsche, Lamborghini, now Nissan, they're doing these like, like sports, sports car. cars. Uh, Ford did something with a Mustang. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So there's a bunch of different stuff. I, I like, think it's cool. It, it will, It's cool, but how does it handle? I mean, there's Who's, just not enough articulation in the suspension. So it's like a rally car. It's not meant to go uh, yeah. rock crawling. Yeah, okay. Although right. some dude in Moab used to do it in a But I mean, day. you're not going over whoops fast. Like, what does it do well? I don't know. No, it's not a good sports car. And it's not a good truck. But you know what? It's super rad. So let it let, let it, it be. be. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sure. Hey, hey, lighting. Have you heard? No. No, I haven't. Ford CEO Jim Farley recently uh, returned from China, and according to the Wall Street Journal, told board member John Thornton that the Chinese EV makers are a quote unquote existential threat. Yes, they are. Uh, during the trip, he was joined by the CFO John Lawler, who candidly admitted that these guys are ahead of us. Uh, from everything I see, what from Chinese B- market BYD is blowing up right now. But have you seen BYD? Yeah. Like the, well, we they, talked about the shark. Yeah, like it's crazy what they're doing. The, the range, 
I don't know about the build quality. I can't speak to that, but like it's getting better. I mean, we talked about it with Simon from Australia. We oh, talked, that's right, Christy. We talked about the uh, infiltration of Chinese EVs there. So anyway, it was kind of interesting because uh, he noted he'd quote unquote seen this movie before, referring to uh, the Japanese manufacturers and their ability to grab sales uh, in the uh, late seventies and early eighties and. So I think the Chinese are moving faster, faster than even the Koreans did. But the difference, I think, though, is that Japanese were were friendly then, right? Or was that coming out of the Second World War? What, like, like? Well, I, I mean, yeah, vehicles started coming over in the fifties and sixties, but they didn't really start stealing market share until the eighties and nineties. Okay, so it took them some time. Then, the but Korean- we, but we were friendly with Japan and China, not so much not politically, so much. right? Yeah, so well, this is yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. Hey, lighting. Have you heard? No. No. No, I don't think so, huh? Uh, there is a Ranger PHEV that uh, is available in select global markets outside North America, and apparently it is not coming to the uh, United States, no matter what you've heard. But uh, the Have Ranger- we, We've heard it's coming? Well, there's been rumors that if they're introducing it in Europe, why wouldn't you have a PF pickup truck here? Sure. And uh, it's uh, been fully revealed in Europe. So it debuted at the uh, 2024 IAA Transportation Show in Germany. So um, there's three flavors that use the same 2.3 liter gas EcoBoost and a 10-speed automatic. And the PF has a 75 kilowatt electric motor and a lithium ion battery pack that has 11.8 kilowatt hours. The uh, setup is good for 275 horsepower and 509 pound-feet of torque, which makes it more torquey than the Ranger Raptor. And uh, apparently, uh, it'll travel up to about 28 miles on electric only. Okay. So, I don't know, uh, you guys interested in PF trucks? Are you waiting for it to come here? Because uh, in this next story... I mean, a little bit. A little bit. It'd be nice to have something kind of uh, electrified around town. Yeah. All right, well, uh, check this out. Lightning, have you heard? No. Huh. Uh, rumor has it that uh, there is a Super Duty on the way that is going to be a hybrid. So according to our friends over at TFL Truck, uh, the next generation Ford Super Duty may have a 5-liter V8 range extender, just like the uh, Ram. Uh, but it sounds like it would be a setup where it is a range extender and not a hybrid. So uh, you would have an EV pickup truck that has the 5-liter on board. They had an anonymous source saying that a Ford Super Duty, what they're calling an E-Rev, so extended range electric vehicle with a Coyote gas-powered V8, is under consideration, and it's undergoing initial development and testing, but it's all unofficial. Ford has not confirmed or denied this, and, uh, of course, as with uh, everybody, they don't want to comment on future sure, vehicles. Sure. Um, Would you, you take an EV-powered Super Duty with a range-extending V8 on it? I, I don't know. I don't. What I what I would consider though, is the um, the Ram Revolution, which is the locomotive version. Well, that's, I think that's this is the of, Ford version of that. that so this identical. Is it. Yeah, this would be uh, what would compete against that. So yeah. I, so so yes. let me let me add then some I, context. I would I, I would consider it. According to the article on TFL Truck, it said that uh, they're saying it would be additive to the lineup, not something that would be taken away. Uh, and Ford CEO Jim Farley said on record, E-Revs in the U.S. could be 120 miles of all electric, and they drive like EVs. They don't drive like combustion engine vehicles, so you get an EV, and you have 700 miles of total range. You don't have range anxiety for a long trip. You don't have to rely on any chargers, and those vehicles have half the battery, so they're very profitable. That came from uh, the Detroit News. Wait, I, I don't understand. Why 120 miles of all electric? It should be always all electric because it's just a because, giant generator. Well, you don't know that. I, We're surmising. Oh, okay. So but, I don't, but, I don't but think they the dialed Ram, in. But the Ram, it was yes, supposed to be. But we're not talking way, about right? the Ram. We're talking about the Ford. Okay. All right. So what I'm, what I'm, what I think he's trying to say is, without the engine running, you would have 120 miles. Oh, uh, got so it. from a full charge. Got it. And then once you go through your full charge, then the generator kicks in. You so in forever. a full tank, you'd have 700 miles. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Okay. So the article goes on to say that it would be focused on productivity, payload, and towing capacity. Because it's a super duty and you cannot have less capacity. So um, anyway, it would be uh, it would be pretty interesting. So would you pay eighty thousand? Would it be on yes. par with a diesel? Yes, yes, I think so. It would be a V eight. Sound like me yeah. like that? God, you know what? I, I'm trying to think, have we had like Jim Farley is a really interesting CEO. Yes, he is. He just comes out and says a lot more than most CEOs. Oh, I think that's why people like him. Yeah, yeah. Hey, lighting. Have you heard? No. 
Uh-uh. Sounds like Toyota got rid of the Land Cruiser's uh, top trim. The 2025 model will start at 57900 which is $555 more than last year. So Toyota is simplifying the lineup with the uh, first edition model now being removed. So that was the one-year-only uh, special model that uh, came fully loaded. Now you can basically just tart up your uh, Land Cruiser. So I don't think it got <laughs> less, less luxurious. I think they just don't have a full package. So okay. uh, Land Cruiser 1958 model still has the retro design with the round headlights. I just hate the grill of the Land Cruiser. I love the overall shape and everything. I just, I just so I have seen ugly. two now on the road, and they're, they're okay. not my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they would have had the uh, the six in them, but that's uh, that's me. Uh, anyway, the uh, standard Land Cruiser gets those uh, LED rectangular headlights and then uh, faux leather seats and uh, the, the bigger screens. Uh, there are a couple of updates for 25. That's an integrated liftgate that makes the cargo area more visible at night and a new Heritage Blue paint option on the standard Land Cruiser trim. You can get the premium package, which gives you the 20-inch wheels, 14-speaker JBL audio, heads-up display, wireless charging, all that stuff. Anyway, so uh, for those of you who uh, missed out on the 24 Land Cruiser, uh, I'm sure the demand will still uh, keep you from getting a 25. If you're a Land Cruiser fan, I think you're into this. I think you're you're going to figure out a way to get one. Maybe. Hey, Lightning, have you heard? No. No, uh-uh. 2024 Toyota Tacoma owners are finding out that uh, their eight-speed automatic might be giving up the ghost early. Oh, no, I've not heard about this. So there's been a uh, technical service bulletin for the 2024 Toyota Tacoma eight-speed automatic. Uh, if it gives one of six diagnostic trouble codes, Toyota will replace the trans. Oh my God! Which trouble code is that? So, That's like, a, wow! It only a zero 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 zero. It's a 2024 Tacoma TSB on the eight speed only, and uh, it was posted on the Tacoma 4G forum and spelled out uh, how some trucks could receive a new transmission if they uh, have a trouble code. So it's not a recall. But before Toyota will uh, swap the uh, the gearbox, uh, the codes reference a stuck pressure control solenoid. Uh, one appears when the torque converter clutch actuator is stuck off, and uh, there's some other stuff. So the bulletin doesn't describe what owner might experience, uh, but owners have complained to the to NHTSA of experience lots of power, rough shifting, other gearbox issues uh, related to that uh, eight speed. So God, man, it's Toyota. Like, what's going I know, on? I know you expect it just to. to out- when they launch, it should be perfect. You'd think so. You'd think so, yeah. Is that because Americans are building them? Ouch. Hey, Lightning, have you heard? No. No. Uh-uh. Well, apparently uh, thieves keep stealing Ford's uh, Super Duty taillights. Why? Interesting I've not heard of this. Well, we uh, talked about headlights. Well, guess what? The new Super Duty uh, taillights fully loaded up with uh, all the blind spot and stuff. Yeah. $2,700 each. Oh, wait. What the? $2,700 You wonder why your insurance keeps going up. $2,700 each for a tail light lens. So it's, well, it's the housing, but that, yeah, it, right. it's one one unit. It's been a problem over the past couple of years, especially in Texas, according to this article, uh, on F-150s and Super Duties. So Omaha Bravo Designs Aftermarket Company has a kit designed to keep these parts in your truck. They're known as OBD, and they're calling it the All Guard Kit. And it's supposed to ship uh, in November. It includes hardware for the taillights, tailgate, even the hood. Pricing starts at 150 for raw finish or 180 for uh, powder coating. Sounds like uh, cheap insurance to us. Well, I mean, it's 180 dollars for a couple of metal brackets. It's expensive, but again, yeah, a couple of grand for taillights is bonkers. Dude, I just can you imagine, especially on a truck where they're going to get broken by a trailer or a pole but or wait, bad driving. So here's my question: Yeah, who's stealing them and why? What are they putting them on? Because the trucks are so brand new. That like there's nothing to put them on, are they? Unless they fit the older gens, uh, is that I the case? Don't know, don't know. We should talk to the truck Omaha, show podcast at. Let's call the Omaha company. Truck show podcast at uh, gmail dot com. If you have had issues with your taillights being stolen, huh? Hey, lighting, have you heard? <laughs> no, I haven't. So if you want a 2025 F two fifty XL base truck, uh, it will uh, cost you about fifty grand. Hmm. And okay. Go, go up from there. Seems like a lot. For, Seems uh, like a lot for a base truck. Base truck. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, starting price is forty six nine sixty five, uh, basically up three hundred thirty dollars. And then if you want the F three fifty XL, that's forty eight five ninety. 
And again, you're getting the six eight with this, right? Uh, this is the six eight, I believe, and it climbs up to eighty one one sixty for the platinum, and then the F four fifty XL base model starts at sixty one nine fifty. So, yeah, that's uh, a little spendy. The uh, the most expensive would be the F four fifty platinum at a cool ninety six zero three zero. Which, by the way, are super popular because people love very, the turning radius. Very popular. Yeah, did, the wide I, track axle. Yeah. Boy, guys who tow with those yeah, they, really love the 450s. Well, and, and they come with the uh, commercial tires and all that kind of stuff. On the, I think they have the 1905s yep. on them. And yeah, just it's, it's a nice setup. That's the way to go. Hey, Lighting, have you heard? Yes, 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 yes. No. Maybe not. So if you remember, the uh, Chevy Colorado's had a bit of an engine identity crisis uh, it had two versions of the same uh, 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder, and then they uh, dropped the uh, the standard output, which was a 237 horsepower, 259 pound feet of torque, uh, available in the work trucks. And they said, no, 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 we'll we'll just give you the middle and the the top, which is 310 horsepower and 391 pound feet of torque. And then the uh, Turbo Plus top line was also 310 horsepower, but 430 pound feet of torque. And so my now, head is spinning right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So you basically had the L2R. Then you had the L3B, okay. and then you had the L3B high output. Oh, my God. And so, anyway, they uh, named the high output to Turbo Max with the 2024 Silverado 1500, then to the Colorado, and the Canyon, and the Sierra, and then for 25, they're ditching the L2R, so it's just the L3B Turbo Max engine is the this only is one available. This is just word soup. What, where are you, where are you oh, going with this? Just, so what engine do we have today? All you get is the uh, high output 310 430 horsepower. Okay, so they're getting rid of all that smorgasbord, and they're just going with- One engine. One engine. Okay, well, that's fine. So there's okay, no high, right. high output. Now, it's standard output. Standard. But it's the same as the old high output. It's also okay. probably called high output. So it's I called the Turbo Max. Turbo Max. Got it. There you go. So, I think uh, that is the one that Gail has, and- um, It's good until you Eric. put, put yeah. 35s on it and don't re-gear it, and then it's, and then it's a dog, yeah. It needs a pedal monster. Uh, needs uh, gearing because yeah, even true. on a uh, 35 equipped uh, Bison, it, because they have a 342 gear ratio when they really need a 373 or a uh, 342 is odd, huh? Well, everything has it, and that's you put 35s. It's like they don't even do the gear ratio. It's typical gotcha. GM. It's like just make a gear ratio in there, pal. Uh, anyway, hey, lighting. Have you heard? Welcome to Barnes and No. <laughs> no, I have not. If you've been waiting for your uh, Ineos Grenadier, apparently uh, there's a critical component from a specific Ineos supplier that has slowed down production. And the interwebs are rife with speculation, and they think that it is, well, the Recaro bankruptcy oh. is what's slowing it down. Okay, this is, so. uh, man... Recaro was in uh, how many different makes and models? Quite a few. A lot. Yeah. A lot. So anyway, uh, if you are waiting for your Grenadier to get built, you can curse the people that made Recaro go bankrupt for your weight. Investment bankers for the win. Hey, Lighting, have you heard? No. Mm, I don't think so. Ford wants you to buy a new Ford F-150 Lightning or I'm Mustang Mach-E. sure they do. And yep. they're going to sweeten the deal through the end of the year. Uh, the new Ford Power Promise uh, it's a set of services to fix some of the biggest barriers of entry to getting an EV. And apparently, if you buy one of those trucks, you get a free home charger and installation as part of your purchase. So, Wow. If so the, if you get what again? If you get the Ford Lightning or the Mach-E. Yep. So if you're uh, you're on the fence, uh, check out the Ford Power Promise with your local dealer. That's uh, actually kind of expensive to install that stuff. A couple of uh, grand, it could be, right? Well, two to 10,000, depending on if you have to redo your panel and all that kind of stuff. When I did my Damn. home charger, I was already putting a panel in and I said, well, wow, we're doing this anyway. Let's, uh, let's what if they're going to put a cap on it? Like if you buy these two vehicles, if they're like, we'll give you up to X dollars. Well, the program started on October 1st and it includes other perks. And for anyone who wants a Mustang Mach-E, F-150 Lighting or E-Transit cargo van. So it's 24 seven life technical support for any EV needs, complimentary roadside assistance, uh, even if you run out of juice and reminding buyers that the battery warranty is good for eight years or 100,000 miles. Uh, so they're saying, hey, get a charger. Charge at home. Gotcha. You don't need uh, stinking gas anymore. And one last story. Uh, going back to our friends over at TFL Truck, uh, there's a great article you should read. It's called, Did You Know Cummins Makes a 14.3 Liter Four-Cylinder Diesel Engine? Oh, by the way, it makes 1,000 horsepower. What? 2,424 pound-feet of torque and is a... Check this out. Opposing piston, two-stroke, turbocharged, and supercharged. Oh, my God. A super turbo. Yeah. Okay. Opposing, Opposing piston. Opposing pistons yeah. like, a, like a BMW motorcycle? 
Uh, I guess. Yeah, sure. Why not? It's part of the Advanced Combat Engine program, and so there's a cool article that our uh, that our buddy Andre did over there. So uh, head over to TFL Truck. That is a crazy looking engine. Wow. Huh. Wouldn't it be cool to swap it into something? Yes, absolutely. Wonder, 14 liters. How what big will it, is? it fit in? A tank? It made those turbos look tiny, and those turbos are uh, got to be are, huge. Yeah, those turbos are the size of your head. So it's got a supercharger mounted on the right-hand side, sideways, with turbos one on top of each other on the face of it. I can't even... There's, you can't describe there's, it. No, you got to like see I said, this Just thing. go to TFL truck. Yeah, and of course, it's, it's coming, so it's all painted red. Wow. 14.3 liters. She is a biggin'. The Truck Show Podcast is a production of Truck Famous LLC. This podcast was created by Sean Holman and Jay Tillis with production elements by DJ Omar Khan. If you like what you've heard, please open your Apple Podcast or Spotify app and give us a five-star rating. And if you're a fan, there's no better way to show your support than by patronizing our sponsors. Some vehicles may have been harmed during the making of this podcast.